Welcome to Young Tuition. Let's continue discussing basic issues in physics in relation to climate research over the past century. From now on, I will alternately give my talks for the general public who are interested in what's going on in basic research in weather change and climate stability. Today, I will use a plain language and a simple demonstration to show the surface of the Earth can hardly radiate infrared in the presence of the atmosphere. Are you ready? Let's go and have fun. First of the first, as the planet, the Earth move around the sun in vacuum, but its body is submerged in its gaseous atmosphere. Although the actual ground temperature is changeable, the long-term global average temperature near the surface, 288 Kelvin, can be used to describe the thermal equilibrium between the surface and the air to study climate stability. This implied the air temperature next to the ground should be the same, just as you use a blanket in a cold night. In other words, the temperature difference between the air near and the Earth's body is zero. Both common sense and the thermodynamics law tell us if that is the case, then there should be no heat transfer at the surface including radiation, because radiation is one of the three thermal transfer processes. Here, I would like to do a simple demonstration. There are two eggs. One of them was just boiled. I can use this IR thermometer to measure the egg's surface temperature by detecting his infrared radiation. Does this mean the boiled egg just radiates? Not really, because both thermal conduction and convection also do the same job. In fact, the three thermal transfer processes are constantly in competition in minimizing the temperature difference. To monitor the surface temperature of the boiled egg, I just use a rubber loop to uh, place a temperature sensor like so. And then I drop it into this jar with water at uh, about uh, 19 degrees Celsius. What would happen? As you can see, the surface temperature of the egg is decreasing. Why? Simple because the water is colder. If we wait for a while, say five minutes or so, we will see the temperature difference between the egg surface and the water will be diminished towards zero. At this moment, the surface temperature of the boiled egg has reached to 21.6 degrees Celsius. This indicates that the temperature difference is 21.6 minus 19.9 equal to 1.7 degrees Celsius. Does this mean the water in the jar is colder than the egg everywhere? To answer this question, let me move the position of the temperature sensor in the water, like so. As you can see, the water temperature close to the egg is 21.3 degrees Celsius, almost identical to the surface temperature of the egg. Aha, 21.6 degrees C here. This tells us the temperature difference between the egg and the water is zero. If I move the sensor upward a little bit, oh, the water temperature is slightly higher than the egg, 22, 
22.1 degree Celsius now. This shown this region is warmer than the egg. At the bottom, however, the water temperature is still 21 degrees Celsius. This implies the water temperature distribution is not uniform. If we keep waiting, the temperature difference will be completely disappear between the egg surface and the water around it. This means that no thermal transfer, including the thermal radiation, could happen between the egg and the water anymore. If I put this uh, model Earth into this plastic bag, like so, can you see that? Can you see that? Like so, the conclusion would be the same, although the mass density and the heat capacity of air are much lower. This is what can happen in your greenhouse, but the gas is just air. Over 99% molecules are nitrogen and oxygen that are not so-called greenhouse gases. Imagine. After a few hours, what would happen to the temperature difference between the air and the tiny Earth's surface? Zero. Any thermal transfer between them, including infrared radiation? The answer is apparent. Nevertheless, when Arrhenius built his climate model in 1896, he didn't think so. As you can see in this diagram, he assumed there is a gap of vacuum between the ground and it's a single layer model for the atmosphere, an imaginary gap of vacuum. Imagine if we put the two parts together, physically attached to each other, the bottom of his atmosphere can hardly have different temperature from the ground. Do you agree? Nevertheless, this had been a theoretical puzzle called the temperature jump that has never been explained in all of climate models that have been used to predict what will happen in the next centuries. So when you hear anyone says that the surface always radiates infrared ray, as a black body in vacuum at a temperature 288 Kelvin, you can ask him or her, what would be the air temperature on the ground in your climate model? If they say, well, we assume it is approximately the same as Van Vingarden and Hepper did, then you may ask them further, how can the heat transfer occur if their temperature difference is zero? So this is similar to a situation when skyscraper is built on an invisible foundation. Well, may we say or sing, Long live the king, God save the king. May the him forever, hallelujah, hallelujah. But no one can save Arena's assumption in his climate model. Perhaps someone may argue that the air and the surface can hardly reach a perfect thermal equilibrium due to diurnal variation and the local weather change. Therefore, the surface should still have some chance to emit infrared radiation upward. Good point if one is studying weather change. That is true. But I am studying long-term global average observations in relation to climate stability. 
rather than diurnal variation and local weather. To do so, we must make it absolutely clear that the energy conservation should be uphold, both at the surface and at the top of the atmosphere. Hence, an averaged thermal equilibrium surface temperature with the air, although hardly be measured, is essential for such a theoretical research. Because the surface infrared radiation is absent due to the attached air blanket, predominantly made by nitrogen and oxygen gases, it is now unnecessary to expect any greenhouse gases to block the imagined escaping thermal radiation from the surface anymore. I hope you have understood more about my new idea. If you have further questions, please let me know. Thank you for the support from many viewers and see you next time.